Fuck it, man. Two lives in one day, man. Not really like me, man. <laughs> but this shit is just too much, man. I would say probably been about a month, man, since I was on this funky ass east side. For the last month, I've been in Venice Beach, Marina Del Rey, uh, what they call that shit out there, fucking, uh, what the fuck, well, Brentwood, uh, out there in the, oh, Pacific Palisades, man, you know, I've been working in the, in the money and shit, you know, man, when I go in people's yards, I just stand back there like I'll be back there like an extra five minutes just daydreaming about man if that was my pool. Man, that's a bomb ass deck. Man, this pool is fucking nice. Look at this man cave back here. You know, all kind of nice shit. Oh well, manicured yards and shit, no dogs. Back on this funky motherfucker, man. <laughs> Damn! I'm fucking this little place right here, man. Oh, man, man, I'm trying to go in their fucking yard. And I was like, cool. They home. Cool. And I'll just go to the back. Should have seen it. all the shit. It was a punk ass trail, man. They had so much shit on the side of the fucking house. And I get to the back, and this fucking dog is back there going crazy. Not no vicious ass pit bull or rock water. Who was that? Wants to join? Hold on, let me add this dude. Marcel, what up, Cell? Oh, we could talk all kind of shit. Hold on. Let's see. What's up, what's up big homie? Cell, what's up, man? Hey, say, man, listen, you always go live, man, with all these stories and all these back. Yo, what the fuck do you do, man? Are you an animal trainer or are you a motherfucking lawn man? <laughs> I, work, I, mean, I, work for the, I work for the utility company out here, man, and I be fucking with people's meters and shit like that at their house, man. Oh, okay. You a meter uh, reader then. Okay. Yeah, nigga didn't know. I, nigga I, didn't know. I, don't, I don't read the meters. I, I replace them motherfuckers and work on them and shit like that. You know what I mean? Just, Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm just saying, because we always see you go live. I'm like, man, what do this nigga do, man? This nigga be in and out of nigga backyards and tunnels and shit. You be down in basements and shit. Oh, kind of stupid shit, man. It's a setup, homeboy. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, man, these people had so much shit on the side of their house. I'm like, the motherfucker moving ladders and moving shit so I can get to the back. Then when I get to the back, I'm like, five feet from where I need to get to this motherfucking electric panel. So I start moving shit out the way. Man, I must have moved something, man, and I, I must have disturbed a uh, hornet's nest, man, like some wasps. Man, the motherfucking wasps start, ooh, the motherfuckers start coming out that motherfucker looking for something terrible. Man, all they can see was my big ass. Man, I grabbed so, my so, food, man. I was running and swatting my head. <laughs> so this is the, the question. Front. All right, so this is the question, though. Besides yeah. all the bullshit, have you ever ran into the Plug Connect? A Plug Connect. I mean, have you ever been? To, have you ever been down in the basement and saw the mother load, mate? You ain't never. You know what I'm talking about? Nah, just gonna spit it out, man. Keep it 100, man. Quit beating around have the bush you, with your boy. Have, have you ever ran into Carlos and them stash, man? Oh no, nah, man. <laughs> hey, them motherfuckers. They don't even let you on the property, dog. They don't give a fuck. They don't fuck. What you talking about? They don't speak no English. Oh no, nah, motherfucker, you ain't coming over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At all. They be hiding shit, man. They don't want you to know nothing about nothing they got going on in that motherfucker. I see a motherfucker. I'm, I'm tall, nigga. I'm 6'4. So I'm yeah. over fucking fences. I'll be banging on the door shit, and I see a motherfucker just huddled up in the back, just looking at, looking around and shit. Like, I ain't answering that, though. Fuck that motherfucker. I ain't expecting company or nobody. You know what I mean? All right. So, so listen. Okay. So you ain't never, you haven't ran into the plug. Have you ever walked up on a porno movie in, in, in full process? No, I ain't did that. I have been in some, uh, quite a few, uh, well, I'll just get in the lobby of those uh, dispensaries. They don't let a nigga in either, man. Them motherfuckers. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, nah, nah, nah. They be like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and then, uh, hey, man, I one time, though, I did go to this lady house, man, and it was an uh, older Hispanic lady, maybe Puerto Rican. I don't know what she was. She wasn't but a boss. She wasn't, she wasn't 50. 
Boy, that motherfucker come to the back door, man. Had on a blue camisole, my nigga. Straight safe through. No panties, no bra. I was like, she said, come in. I was like, come. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, man. It took me all day to bring my tools in that motherfucker. Because I, something took me three minutes. Took me about 35 minutes to do that shit. Life decision. You thought they're making life decisions? Oh my god, I go get one tool at a time. In, out, in, in, bring my ladder. I didn't even need no ladder. I brought that motherfucker in there. The whole time she was just sitting right there, standing up at the sink. I'm looking all through the light, shining all through her shit. And I know I'm in her peripheral vision. I'm like, damn, is this bitch testing me? Is this real? So I'm like up on the ladder, nigga. I'm grabbing my crotch and shit. I'm like, I know she see this shit. I'm like, is she gonna bite on this shit? Is she gonna, something gonna happen? I don't know. <laughs> Man, let's get the fuck up out of here, man. For this bitch, Ooh, let me get up out of here, man. It's too much. Hey, man. I'm just saying, man, because I always see my boy, man. See, he always on one, either running for some dog or, or trying to man. beat a dog off of him or something. Man, you know what I'm saying? You, you remind me, you remind me of that part of Ice Cube in the movie next Friday when when Ice Cube Daddy got bit in the ass. Man, I feel like that motherfucker, man. I, man, I done been <laughs> my dog, man. I done been a. Uh, I don't see pigs. People got pigs in the yards, man. The motherfucker put their dog up and they chicken attack me and shit. I'm like, man, what the fuck going on? Now these wasps and yeah. shit. And you know it's all bad when you pull up on the spot and you look at that motherfucker and you just say, man, now, man, they got a gang of shit. They ain't throwing away near nothing around this motherfucker, man. Mm. So what's up? Nothing I much, man. Phone, you... man. I saw your interview, your uh, interview with Punchy about the proc, man. Uh, what you think about that? Oh yeah, I like this. Uh, I like punchy spin on a lot of things, man. You know, when it comes to the motorcycle set, you know what I mean. So. Uh, I mean, what? What, what do, you, do you think something like that will ever be needed on the West Coast? Man, uh, I really don't know. You know, they got a little spinoff. They got some kind of little awards thing or something. I never been to it, man. But somebody was doing it. I don't know if it's an annual thing that they did it this year or last year. They was doing some kind of war where they was recognizing people on the motorcycle set. And it was put on by somebody, man. I don't know. The I think it was the first. You talking about the one by the first ladies when they did all of the OGs, Toby Jean and them? Nah, this was something that, uh, I don't know. It was a couple of years ago. I don't really remember. I was surprised, though. It wasn't like the first year they did it. I've never been to it. But they gave out some awards to, like, social clubs, motorcycle clubs, individuals. Yeah, on, on well, a the, the topics. Huh? The proc is the proc is a little different. The proc, like I said, been going on for 15 years on the East Coast, and it's mainly more about teaching bikers about the rules, the etiquette, the style, about you know safety. Uh, they got so much different, so much stuff going on, and it's also about new riders. Like if you even thinking about being a new rider, you know how to pick a club, how you know what's the proper way to join a club. But it has it gotten to the point. A lot of people say now. It, I, I've never been. I never attended because. Every time I see a uh, video of it, they do, ain't nothing but a big old party and a big old fuck fest. So my thing of it is, if man, you're going to have a platform... Parties and fuck fest, man. What's wrong with no, 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 but listen to what I'm saying. I don't have a problem with that, but don't disguise it as a motorcycle convention. And then, you know, you don't even get to motorcycle. You get straight to party. Well, you, you know, yeah, you understand what I'm saying? So this year, this year, like I said, with, you know, how everything pro progressed... We was able to put it together. I was able to get Punchy and Snowman to come on board, and like I said, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be different because we the only thing I know is the truth, and you guys hold me to that. You, Big Fred, I mean you, Fast Fred, everybody, all you all the OGs, all of you guys that before me, you guys hold me to the truth, and you guys call me on it if the research need to be done or you know this and this and that. So I think that's one of the things that's gonna be different this year is that the truth is going to be put out there whether whether your club is, is adhering to it or not. You feel what I'm saying? And that's why I told everybody this morning to bring your bylaws because you're not going to use us to beat up your president or to prove your vice president wrong. You feel what I'm saying? Because, like I said, some of these cats out here, especially on the East Coast, in the bylaws, it got where the president got to be the president forever. He can't even be overthrown. <laughs> you, you feel what I'm saying? But you didn't join that club. And now you don't like what he's doing, and you want him gone. But that's the club you join. Well, I like that bringing the bylaws thing, man. A lot of people be in clubs, and they don't even uh, 
they might read their bylaws one time and just don't ever even realize that sometimes they're going to be held accountable for something that falls under that bylaws. They don't even know where to find them at or get them, you know what I mean? Or even yeah. have a good understanding of them and shit, you know? So that bylaw shit is important, man. I, I hope they, uh, it sounds like it's going to be cool, man, from what you're talking, man. I've never been there before. Like I said, I've never even heard of that shit. Would it be good over here on the West Coast, man? Uh, I don't know, man. It's like around here. You know, I keep hearing people say things like the motorcycle set ain't what it used to be. And, uh, you know, and now, you know what? I kind of agree with that to certain shit. Like, I went to the D.O. dance this weekend. And uh, as far it, it, it was like a traditional motorcycle dance, man. I mean, it wasn't, some shit is like way over the top and it's too much. You know, if, if you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody wants to have like a super successful dance, but some shit just be too much. And what make it too much is just all the motherfuckers that really ain't got no passion for this shit or no relation to this shit or nothing. They come to you know what I mean? But when you uh, Tick froze on me. I don't know if he can still hear me. Yeah, it went bad. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you back? Yeah, you. yeah, you back. Yeah, so I was might... saying that uh, some, some of these dances could be uh, too much. You know what I mean? Based on too much, just the crowd is way too big. The people that's there is not even people that's, uh, they civilians is not actually involved with the set. And uh, to go to a dance is just like a good attendance of motorcycle riders, motorcycle clubs, and uh, people that actually embrace this lifestyle, man. That's a good dance, bro. I had a good I mean, well, you, well, you got, but, you, but, see, to, but see, that's what I'm saying, though, Chick. You got to understand this, though. See, you come from the era where when the motorcycle set was private, the set wasn't as public as it is now. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, the set is wide open. Now. It's, it's open to the public. Hey, you got the lady from you got the lady from HDTMZ at the goddamn party. Not that that's wrong. I'm not I'm not knocking the club for that. But she, you already know she there to report the news. That's her yeah. job. <laughs> you well, you know what I'm saying? Newsworthy. I mean, shit. Was, yeah, but I figured though, because uh, yeah, those, back in those days, though. I mean, but I can't say that the set was no better, man. You know what? Even when I first started, when I first came to the set, it was quite a few clubs that, because uh, called they sell motorcycle clubs, and they had patches, and she had their members didn't even own motorcycles. You know what I mean? That ain't nothing new. I mean, there used to be some tow up motherfuckers on the motorcycle set. You know what I mean? Like I was like, man, I don't know how the motherfuckers got a date or a clubhouse. They went, all they wanted was a clubhouse, and it was somewhere to go get high and drink and be out all fucking night. You know what I mean? But they wasn't riding nowhere. If, if, if they went somewhere, it was Fresno or San Diego, and you pass there up on the freeway, you see the motherfucking six, seven D in a car. You know what I mean? And, well, uh, I mean, I, I had somebody. I even had somebody mention, "Hey, Cell, I ain't never seen the East Bay Dragons on their motorcycles." That's yada 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 yada. You have to look at, like I tell them, like this. You have to look at it like this. Time and history back then dictated a lot of things. You feel what I'm saying? And we didn't have the Facebook. We didn't have the social media. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have all of the tools that we have now to show a motherfucker that you've been riding your motorcycle. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So, so don't just automatically beat up on something that you don't know about. You, know, you don't know what the, you don't know what Toby Jean did besides what you read in the book, and besides yeah. if you ever get a chance to hang around them and see what the, what they progress, you know what, whatever they tell you. But they didn't have all of the avenues that we. It's so easy now to make a nigga look like a rider, a yonder get a shit. It, it's the easiest thing. All you gotta do is stop and take a picture. You feel what I'm saying? And then we all know. We both know that we got the ones that did it and, and they'll never do it again. So that don't make you a, a, a bad mo- <laughs> that don't make you a super man, bad motherfucker. Man, the yonder game is a fad, homie. It's a fad like everything else in life, man. It's just yeah. a fad. You know, and everybody that's trying to do it now, nigga, you late, motherfucker. And I said yeah. it. it ain't, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't say go get the 48 and all that for bragging rights and yonder for bragging rights and all that. You know, do that shit because you want to enjoy life and you want to do something you ain't been doing. And, uh, you know, make uh, make friends and, you know, get to know people. Look how my relationship with you, man. I ain't never known you until I started riding on that. <laughs> So, I mean, um, I mean, but that, but that's what the whole thing is all about. Like I tell everybody, man, for me, you know, you can't, you can't challenge me on riding. You can't challenge Smiley, Flacco, and you know, even as a club, you can't challenge Rare Breed because it's this just what they signed up for. Period. You, <laughs> you, you, you feel what I'm saying? So, how you gonna, how you gonna, how you gonna challenge somebody 
whose passion level is on a height that yours you can't even touch. You ain't even passionate about your, your life, let alone riding a motorcycle. Hey, I'll tell you right now, they can't touch it because I swear, I, I know, and I know this to be true. It was a whole lot of people hanging around Red Breed. I mean, hanging. Like, you know, every time you look up, they're around. Every time we went somewhere, they were staying at a hotel. Every time we moved, they was moved, but they never breed it up. And they, they took the easy way out, homie. They wouldn't start their own club so they could have their own rules and their own obligations and their own, you know, this ain't mandatory and that ain't mandatory. And, you know, they, they create shit so that it worked for them. Which ain't nothing wrong with it, man. I mean, you know, do what you I'm, want I'm to get. Do. <laughs> Let me let me share a tidbit real quick. This is some more stuff that I'm writing down for the PR, but I'm gonna share this for everybody that's watching. I'm gonna give this blessing to my man Tick on his page. So you're gonna have to go to his page to catch this jewel. I had a question the other day come to me. Sale, uh, what's the purpose of a club paying dues and how much should dues be? Um my answer to them was this. Just like everything in life, I don't give a fuck, whatever you do in life, if it costs you you're going to be more involved than if you got it for free. Do you agree or don't agree? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with that, man. You know what I mean? Especially <laughs> if you ain't got it just to spend. Like, damn, man, I'm, I'm shit. It's like anything else. You ain't going to pay $75 a month for no phone bill. And, and shit, your only shit only worked the first three days of the month. Like, that part. The fuck? You know what I mean? So, so my response to them was the dues are not for you to pay. So, you know, if you got a clubhouse, fine. If you guys got something you're working towards, fine. But the dues is more like with anything else in life, a discipline factor. If you really want to be a part of this, put some effort to it, put some money to it, put some time in it, and discipline yourself to be a part of it. So they was like, well, other than that, so what's, what's, other than that, the dues, the, dues, the dues serve no purpose because even if a club as big as yours with 100 plus members in the LA, in the LA mother chapter, yeah, and I said it, yeah, I said it, 100 plus, <laughs> a club as big as yours, even with Fifty dollar a month dues, the seventy five dollars a month dues. I heard you mention that. Really, what can you do with that on a monthly basis? Hell, y'all anniversaries is well over a hundred thousand dollars. The shit that you guys do for Christmas and and Thanksgiving and whenever you guys decide to do a uh, whatever contribution is well over anything that you guys collected that you guys could collect in dues. So the dues, like I tell everybody, it's just like like I tell everybody, whenever you love something. You're going to put through two things towards it, money and time. Your wife, if you love your wife, you're going to put money and time towards it. If you love your house, you're going to put money and time towards it. You niggas that love your motorcycle that don't have a house, you're going to put money <laughs> and time towards it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you ain't got to have no money. If you just got a bike and time, man, you got to be in the wind. God. I ain't going to lie, man. You know what? tell you this man when i first started when i first first came on the set it was a couple of things that, that made me gravitate toward the motorcycle club i'm gonna just tell you this one of my first encounters was uh i went to the chosen few clubhouse when it was on 108th and broadway out here chosen few and i pulled up for a friday night i just wanted to go hang out at that shit i've never been and i pulled up and, I, and when i was pulling up there was a couple of color words in front of me. I went out. I didn't know nothing about colors. I didn't know nothing about none of that kind of shit. I just knew that was the place to go. And they was, this is the way to go in. Them, them guys went to pull in, and they went to park in the back of their clubhouse. And I went to do it, and immediately I was stopped. And they was like, nah, boy, you can't. You ain't no color wear. You can't come in. You got to park out there on the street. You know what I mean? So that was the first time. I was like, oh, man, that's fucking dope. I want to park on the street. I want to be in the park. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, that, that was the first time. And then uh, the second thing, by this time I was already a rare breed. I had found my way to the rare breed. I knew about a couple different clubs around, and uh, some of them have more history than rare breed, and they were trying to get me over there and things like that. But uh, when I first encountered rare breed, I seen them dudes and their bikes, and I got a chance to hang out with them and talk to them. I've been along basically my age. Uh, I'm Real deal. And uh, I was standing there talking with them. And they were 
And one of them said to the other one, man, how much money you got? You know, they always count their tools and fuel. They was like, man, we can go down here to San Diego. Watch them go down there and kick them for them party. And uh, let them, when they get tired of it, they go, you know, we're going to go back home. And I was sitting there like, I had to go to work the next day. So they like, went to San Diego. I was like, <laughs> chop it up and talk to man and the stories they would tell and it's crazy like some people man i'll talk to they actually perceive me as one of them dudes and i'm looking like dude I you i mean but you is that chick i mean you you's a you's an old young nigga man you it just is what it is you's an old young nigga man you feel what i'm saying and my question yeah. to you is this my question to you is this do you feel like it's your obligation to to give the history when you see a youngster or have you ever been in a situation where you saw a youngster in colors, maybe doing something the wrong way, have you had the opportunity to put him to the side and, and maybe talk to him or teach him the right way, or do you just mind your business and let him go on about his business? You know what? I talk to people that want to listen, man. I, if, you know, if they don't want to listen, or they, you know, they setting their ways, or they just ain't right, I just look at them like, well, they ain't gonna get it. You know, they they'll be here today, gone tomorrow. They all, everybody get their little five minutes of fame on a motorcycle set. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. uh I mean, it's, it's been some cats in my club that you would have thought was going to be rare breed for life forever. You know what I mean? I mean, they was trying to out rare breed everybody they could be to be, I'm rare breed. You know what I mean? And shit, look up right now, I don't even see none of them motherfuckers. You know what I mean? So, uh, it's just, uh, you could tell, man. You could tell when you were uh, around a motorcycle person and you could tell by the way they carry themselves, the way they the way they think, their mentality, what they doing. It's all obvious, though. It's all obvious. I mean, it's, you could tell. I mean, so so do you do you feel like do you feel like it's the obligation of the OGs? Like, because like I said, times are different. Because even like with me, I was telling a story. When I used to walk to the liquor store, Birch's Liquor right there on 120th and Central, me and my grandmother would walk up from, I lived on 127th and Slater, and we would walk to Birch's on 120th and uh, Central. And, it, you know, it used to be always the OGs standing out, but about four or five old cats sitting out there. You know, back right. in the day, coming up as kids, you thought they was bums. But them motherfuckers used to leave and get their Buick Regals and all they, you know, all that old fly shit back in the day. But right. they'd be sitting out there drinking and chilling, and they would always, come here, youngster. And they would drop them old sayings on you, them old nuggets. You feel what I'm saying? Right. But you not, you know, you're not really paying attention. You just right. thought they was a bunch of old drunk men. But they would always, for whatever reason, for the love of my grandmother, they would always, youngster, come here, man. Blah, 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 blah. And they would just drop that game on me, man. And like I said, I wish I had to pay more attention because some of the shit they were saying was so, it was it was so much of a jewel that it was probably above my pay grade at the time. Hey, man, that's hilarious <laughs> that you just said that whole little story like that. Yeah. Because I know a story, and it go a little something like this, man. I'm just going to tell this story, though. It's, 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 it's everything you just said. So there was this king, an uh, emperor, at this... Uh, you know, he was the king of his land and shit, you know what I mean? And back in those days, they used to want to dispatch messages to another kingdom. They would send their messengers, to, you know, on horseback to go deliver the message to the other kingdom. So this guy calls his messengers in. The king calls his messengers in and says, I need you to take this message to the kingdom over there. But along the way, you're going to come across a river. And when you get to the river, I want you to fill your satchels up with all the stones that you can collect. You know, fill your bags up with all these stones. So true enough, in their travels, they come across this river. It's a dry riverbed. You know what you're talking about? All they see is rocks and stones. They grab a handful. They go to the bag. They go to the king. When they get to the king, they dispatch the message. They go to the statue. And all the stones they collected turn into questions of gems and diamonds and stones and rubies. But then they was all mad at each other because the man told them, fill your satchel with all the stones. They didn't listen. They just took what they wanted. And then they, they cheated themselves. When they got there, they didn't have, they wasn't rich. You know what I mean? You kind of get the more of that story? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotta, but like, that's it, picking up pebbles, homie. You got to, in, in, in the game of life, whatever you do, man, if somebody telling you something, some sharing some knowledge with you, and you can't pick them pebbles up and keep them, 
you know, you ain't gonna never have no stones and rubies at the end of the day, man. You just gonna be uh it's a lot of shit, man. It's all it's yeah. all individual, man. This motorcycle yeah. motherfuckers are Motherfuckers with motorcycles. You know how it goes. Yeah, like I said, and and that's one of the things, like I say, man, it has to do with, like I said, just growing up in life, man. I, I thank God that I had the opportunity to grow up, you know, where I grew up at Compton, Watts, Long Beach, LA, the whole nine yards. But more importantly, right. I think I had I thank God that I was able to see some stuff, man, and kind of see enough shit to stay away from and see enough shit to be a part of. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So <laughs> Yeah. Growing up in LA like we did, man, in the '80s and shit, man, it was very easy to be influenced at a young age, man, because it was so prevalent, man. You know, I, you know they, you know, I hear guys always referencing the gang banging and shit like that in here in LA, man. And you know, nine times out of ten, if you grew up in the '80s, man, you you was banging or you was a hell of fucking affiliate, but you had a neighborhood to claim. The LA has changed, man. I mean, back in them days, you couldn't drive down no street. I, I man, I don't know how many of y'all got out and really ran the streets. I just ran the streets. It was just a trap. I had a car when I was 18. And I ran the streets. I smoked weed over here, over there, over there. I drink over here. I chased women all over, man. And, man, you couldn't drive down half these fucking streets in L.A. without some motherfuckers standing in the street wishing the fuck you would say something about move out the motherfucking way. And they was out. <laughs> they was out on the porches. They was out on the yeah. corners. They was out in the liquor stores. Motherfuckers was banging, dog. Hey, I told I told I told him I told him motherfucker the other day, man. One of the coldest things I ever seen growing up, man. Right there on, uh, I stopped at a liquor store on 76 and uh, 75th and Broadway. That little liquor store used to be on the corner. It was 75th or 76. Anyway, on that corner used to be a little liquor store, and um, some um, this this other dude pulled up, a, a regular dude, a regular brother, I'm gonna say, and you know it was a little young niggas in there playing the games or whatever they was doing what they do. So they saw me, they recognized, okay, he might know it. But they saw the other guy. The other guy was green. So right. while he in there, the little dude went in his pocket. So the brother, you know, snatched his hand out of his pocket like, hey, make it the fuck out of my pocket. Right. So, of course, I already knew that that was a setup. Already, right. <laughs> you already knew that was a setup. So he runs out the store, and then in come these other three cats. Hey, man, you put your hands on my little brother, blah, 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 blah. I told, I looked at the dude. I said, man, listen, man. Hey, like, hey, OG, you ain't got no, hey, no I want OG. Hey, homie, you ain't got to do that. I said, I know, brother, but let me. Let me help him with this. Hey, player, just give him everything you got, buddy. It, it'll save you a whole lot of... <laughs> it'll save you a whole lot of... <laughs> All right. There were yeah. different times, man. You know, I mean, it's still trifling in these streets, man. You can still get tipped off, but it ain't as... It ain't nothing like that, though, man. I mean, now you can run in all these little stores. I mean, in some areas, it's just five blocks, but for the most part, man, uh, you know, the demographics of the neighborhoods, the, the people that live in the neighborhoods... No, that shit has changed, man. It's, it's obvious, man. It's obvious. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and you know, to be lucky enough to uh, dodge the ball and all that shit, be at a place where, like, man, I could buy me a motorcycle. You know, I don't survive all the bullshit. You know, like Punchy said, man, we're in the fourth quarter of the game of life, man. It's like, motherfucker, just want to have fun, man. And if, if you can go places you ain't never been, man, and, and go meet people that share that have the same passion for the shit you do, I could walk in. Right now, I, I, I could walk in Philly or New York or uh, Georgia or Texas. Where the fuck? If they got a black motorcycle set there, trust and believe me, I could pull up on that motherfucker and drop my kickstand and, and get off my bike and fit right the fuck in whether I've been there before or not because I'm a motorcycle man. That's what yeah. I do. And at the end of the day, they're going to know I was there. You know what I mean? And the next time I come through there, they're going to know I was coming. So It's just uh, like that It's like that time y'all stopped in Mississippi and found a little hole in the wall across the street. Wherever. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. No, that was in Virginia. Man, we was in uh, Virginia. We oh, I thought y'all said y'all was in Mississippi. I thought, I thought y'all did one in Mississippi, too, when y'all was in Mississippi or something across the street from the hotel. Somebody, um... That was Virginia. That was, okay. We stopped in Virginia after we had been riding all day. It was like 9 o'clock at night. We got off the highway, and we went to this hotel. And right across the street from my hotel that we was going to check into was somebody's annual dance, the Black Motorcycle Set. Uh, annual dance that was the host hotel and i was looking like i mean it was obvious it was packed with bikes it was hella people i was like motherfucker man i ain't seen no niggas in three days you know oh shit i'm going <laughs> over there you know <laughs> yeah man me and my boy went over there man we party with them motherfuckers all night i wasn't even there 15 minutes but they was offering me drinks introduced me to their women rolled up and packed to the party partied all night all that shit 
everything. And they was all from Philly, Jersey, New York, uh, Virginia's, all that East Coast shit. I'll find my patch up in that motherfucker. They, they well, we had a good time. Yeah. Well, as, al as always, big homie, man, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. What people don't know is me and you kind of talk often, off the camera. A lot of times we talk on a regular basis. So I always appreciate the knowledge that you drop. I always appreciate you keeping me in line, man. Hey, uh, you see you got old, uh, old uh, what you call him on here, Daryl Kemp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got old Daryl Kemp on here peeping. You feel what I'm you saying? Uh, yeah. Daryl Kemp, man, Daryl Kemp. Bill Kip is my road dog, man. That's my homeboy, yeah. man. That's I'm, that's my partner, man, for life, man. Chop a dirt. You know what I'm talking about? Chop, hey, chop. Let me tell you about Dirt Rock when I first first met Dirt Rock, man. His cousin, his first cousin is my sponsor. His cousin was a breed before me. His name is Dirty Will. He sponsored me, right? So I'm in Oakland. You know, I'm fairly new to the Red Breach. I've been around a year, so I got a couple of runs in. I was down there with my wife, uh, who was my girlfriend at the time, right? So we come creeping in, maybe 2, 2 30 in the morning uh, to the hotel. We used to stay at this hotel in Jack London Square. They had this underground parking. You park downstairs, go into the bottom, and go upstairs. So me and my wife going through there. This is big nigga, man, sitting on a bench and shit, right? Laid all back. He all blacked out. He ain't no green, right? I ain't never seen this before in my life, man. He had the females up against the wall. They looked like they was up to no good. You know what I mean? I can tell you. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that, this nigga got, like, some size 15s and shit, man. He had his Stacey's all the shit. So I had to walk past the nigga, man. So the nigga moved his feet. was like, what's up, big homie? I was like, what's up, man? But I wasn't really – I didn't know he was trying to get in the club. I didn't know he was hanging around. I, you know, and I don't take the, like, niggas I don't know too much. You know what I mean? I kind of just be like – he was just there. So that was the first time I seen him. So the next time I see him, I'm like, oh, I realize, you know, oh, this this that dude, he's trying to get in the club. So uh, we was in oh we was in Fresno. And I was doing me, man, and I was just seeing the dude. I said, man, what you doing, homeboy? What you doing right now? He was like, man, I ain't doing nothing. I said, come on, take a lap with me. And we ran over. Me, him, and his cousin went to the Harley Davidson dealership. That's when we actually got to talk. We ended up hanging that whole weekend, man, and we thinking things for many years. It's like, that's what you need to talk to. Cause the dude, we were talking about the story, telling he got a hell of a business. I ain't really no storyteller, man, and I don't, I don't remember. Shit no more, man. My starting to slip. Well, I mean, I, I fuck with, I fuck with dirt. Like I said, I fuck with dirt. Dirt is the only cat I ever met that even when he take his helmet off, his head still shaped like a helmet. No matter if he got, <laughs> his, his right. hair, his hair still got that helmet shape. Dirt. I told dirt, I say, boy, you, you a real motorcycle nigga, man. Cause no matter what, your head, your hair is ready for the helmet, man. Cause it's, it's shaped right. just like the helmet, no matter what, mate. Man, me and that dude, man, we beat the streets, man. We 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 burnt up all these cities in this motherfucker, man. We burnt them up, dog. Me and that nigga used to go to Oakland, and I swear to God, they would have walks and shit at these motherfucking annual dances. As that nigga would come find me, like, tick, nigga, it's time to walk. And I'd be like, nigga, we should walk. He was like, nigga, we're going to walk, nigga. we walk across the stage, nigga, one, <laughs> two red breeds. Yeah. The crowd be going crazy, though, man. They used to love it. Hey, man. man. Two motherfuckers, man. That shit, I used to just be like, man. We just, we just hang like a motherfucker, man. We, we gonna get that. Girl. You gonna see more dirt and tick, uh, 2018. Hey, well, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna tell you what I learned from both of you and dirt, though. I'm gonna tell you some real shit. This is the realest shit ever. All bullshit aside, this is what I learned from you and dirt. You ready? Go ahead. Stand by the speaker during the dance, nigga. Stand by the speaker during the dance, man. Oh, yeah. Stand by the speaker. <laughs> and if you leave the speaker, nigga, you better be going to stand by the women's bathroom. <laughs> If, that's if you want to come up. I'm just saying, you know, you want to come up, you know. If you just there for some other shit, at the end of the day, ain't no pressure, you know. You have to get your situation. You know, you can move all around. For me, that was $47.80 like, per time. Like, the mileage that you did not receive. And then, uh, hey, hey, a new one. I placed those tires that me and your wife had talked about, which were the Firehawk All Seasons. They have 50,000 mile warranty. Mm -hmm. And I placed them all in about two weeks. And I got them all back. Hey, you know what? I got them all back. With the road hazard, what she said she wanted. Hold on, you're gonna hang your ass up. Yeah, do that. Where you at, man? That was a good conversation, man. I enjoyed that shit. Anyways, man, I don't know who's following, but uh, all right, man. If you on the motorcycle set and you uh, 
you know, you're wearing some colors and things like that, man. You might really want to take do some soul searching to see what you uh really want in life, man. As far as the set, I keep hearing that shit about the set ain't what it used to be and all that old shit, man. It's just doing different people doing the same old shit to me, but uh that's how I feel about it. Later.